On the other side of beating self-sabotage really is just stepping into this space of letting good things happen to you. I'm Emma Gannon, I'm a writer, a novelist, a podcaster, and I call myself a multi-hyphenate because I do a few different things. We say negative things to ourselves because we feel like if we say them first, they won't hurt as much when someone else might say them. So if we say that we're bad at writing or we'll never be successful in that area, it's a way of really protecting ourselves against any criticism or feedback or it could be that we're sort of triggered from childhood memories of maybe a teacher saying that we weren't very good at something. It's a way of kind of getting there first. And the sort of following thing that kind of carries on from that negative self-talk is sometimes we can go and seek out confirmation that we are right and that our negative self-talk has a point. So we might go looking for negative comments. We might look through, I don't know, tweets about maybe an article we wrote or look at the comment section on websites, which is never a good thing to do. But we can go basically hunting out for proof that our self-sabotage is correct when in fact it's not helpful at all. With quietening the voice of uh, self-sabotaging your kind of own thoughts around your work, number one is to talk to yourself as you would a friend. So write down what you would say to a friend if they were having the exact same worrying thoughts as you. I'm sure you would come up with so many different ways of telling them advice or giving them practical tips or even just listening. And I think sometimes we have to practice that on ourselves and be really compassionate and really kind of understand that these thoughts aren't true, but they're coming from a place of fear, which is a real thing. The second part of this lesson really is to imagine yourself as your younger self. So someone who might be very young and being creative for the first time, or even your younger self from maybe five years ago when he or she was just kind of still learning and giving things a shot. And this lesson really is about looking at yourself through the eyes of being younger and being someone that actually needs a lot of support. And if you imagine yourself as your younger self, you wouldn't necessarily speak badly to them. You wouldn't be negative about them trying. You would just think, that's amazing, you gave it a go and you put yourself out there, that's so cool. The other thing you can do to encourage more positive thoughts and actually kind of practice saying more positive things about yourself to yourself, about your work, is to go and ask friends and family and people who you know think you're fantastic, to basically tell you what they think of you and actually write it down so that you have something to refer to. Sometimes I actually find it useful to have a folder in my emails called nice things or something like that. And you actually drop in any positive praise, positive feedback into there. And if you're ever feeling negative about yourself, you can kind of have a little look and remind yourself of real positive feedback that you've had through your work. So this exercise is really about looking from a different perspective at some of the thoughts that you have maybe day to day and actually unpicking where they might come from. I'm going to, for this exercise, just write down some of the kind of bigger, more overwhelming thoughts I might have before starting something or maybe posting about it or sending it out to someone. Number one would be everyone will think it's terrible. First of all, I can look at that and think, who is everyone? It's pretty unlikely that absolutely everyone will think what you're doing is terrible. There is a market now for anything and everyone. And we can really see this playing through in something like the podcast industry because there are so many out there. And there are so many very strange ones that are quite niche topics that maybe won't resonate with the, like the mainstream or kind of a mass crowd. But there are definitely pockets of the internet and communities that will talk about something that maybe not everyone is interested in. When you write down something like this, it's kind of extremely unlikely that you won't find at least a few people who will resonate with your work. Another way to kind of look at these negative thoughts and try and kind of turn them around is to imagine that you are saying them to a younger version of yourself. So for example, one thing might be that the thing that you've made or the idea that you have isn't good enough when you're sort of, I guess you're saying that the person isn't good enough. If you were imagining your younger self saying that, you would definitely try and build them up. You would say, 
you can do another draft. You can make this better. You are definitely worthy of this project. You are good enough. And the fact that you're even trying means that you are already good enough. The other thing that this exercise can sometimes do is when you write it down, it can sound quite ridiculous in the nicest possible way. And sometimes that can be really freeing because you can write down a thought and actually you can look at it and you can think that is totally not the case. And it just sounds totally over the top. And one thing that it reminds me of is a friend of mine who had a book that came out a few years ago. And she said that she kept having dreams and thoughts that basically the book was so, so terrible and so awful that absolutely everyone at the publisher would lose their jobs because of how awful this book was. And it actually went on to be really an incredible bestseller and it went so well and loads of people loved it. But even just that idea of someone thinking that can sort of sound quite ridiculous out loud. Everyone will shun me. A really crucial part of this exercise is reading it out loud. And sometimes, you know, it is even quite soothing to read out like negative comments if someone has ever made them about you. I personally find that quite fun to do. You're kind of retraining yourself to think of things in a different light and not taking them as seriously because you're not giving them as much weight because they don't deserve it. So with these three points, um, I'm going to read them out. And when I say them, I think we'll agree that they kind of don't sound true. So number one, everyone will think it's terrible. Number two, it's not good enough. And three, everyone will shun me. Try and say them in a way that makes them sound ridiculous because they are. Don't give them any weight. Try and kind of push against them. And at the end of this exercise, really what you want to do is kind of rip up what you've written down, put it to one side, say that you're not going to think like that anymore and sort of totally kind of get that out of your head because I think rereading negative things can sometimes make us believe they're true. So this exercise is really about getting them down, getting them out, saying them out loud, and then deciding that you're not going to do it anymore and sort of drawing a line under it. So that was really fun. And I really recommend doing that because now they don't exist, any of those negative things. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, feel free to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all of our latest videos.